Happy to be here and honored to be here with all of you illustrious uh, bipedal sacks of saline solution this morning on World Water Day. So I'm gonna share screen and just pop that up there. Is that up? Yeah, we're good. Okie dokie. So um, I just wanna, you know, basically start off with just welcoming us all to planet water. Not really planet Earth. It's 70% of the surface of this being is a saline solution of the ocean and the bulk of that terrestrial landmass is, as we well know, is in different states of water. And so for me as a biologist, um, I'm really interested in that basically uh, carbon-based life is mostly water. And therefore, I, I would assert that we're the only place in the known universe where water is life. And hook me up with an extraterrestrial from another planet, super or a cosmos or another galaxy. Love to meet them. It'd be really fascinating. But I damn well know that life is here on this one, and I'm not interested in moving to Mars or the Moon. And I'd love it if Elon Musk and his crew would just leave and go go move there, so the rest of us can get on living on this amazing planet. Um, I run co-direct this Water Institute with Kate Lundquist at the Occidental Arts and Ecology Center here in Sonoma County. WATER is an acronym for Watershed Advocacy, Training, Education, and Research Institute. You can look us up online. I apologize now, this, this show's a bit dense because of the you know short time. So uh, since it's being recorded, I'm, I put in links and covers of the documents so that people can go back and you can then you know search them and find them online. Um, I think a lot of what I've been working on for the last 30 years formally now is what I call basins of relations. And I've done community watershed trainings throughout the, the US, especially in California, to support communities in creating watershed councils, watershed groups, and this idea of the relations we all share within the basins. And how do we really rethink from the ridge, the river to the reef, what is a reverential and resilient rehydration revolution retrofit? And that's kind of what I'm up for. And that document there, Basins of Relations, you can download. It's a PDF. I don't know, 25 years ago, I coined this phrase, slow it, spread it, sink it, store it, share it. And you can find it. It's been published in a series of stormwater water conservation booklets up in Canada, throughout California, different guidebooks. But it's a lot of, uh, of getting into what um, I think we all have a sense around these restoration small water cycles. But you can find these booklets online. And again, it's really the, the consciousness shift starting in the headwaters, which is the water in our own heads, to actually get the reality that we have to move from a, the drain age to the retain age. And that the dehydration, desiccation, degradation, death design is something that um, we have to move away from. Um, I've termed that idea for a long time now, uh, conservation hydrology. I went to uh, school at UC Santa Cruz in conservation biology. And as an endangered species vertebrate biologist, it became clear to me that when the water cycle of a place is compromised, the carrying capacity for life accordingly is compromised. And so conservation hydrology for me is the nexus on behalf of trying to create conditions conducive for life. Um, and we do a lot of that work at OAC and then also co-founded this Russian River Coho Water Resources Partnership uh, over 12 years ago. And this is an amazing effort with a multi-stakeholder group of agencies, nonprofits, NGOs, governmental entities. Here's four books that people might, are booklets, pretty dense booklets on streamflow improvement plans for four watersheds in the Russian River. Again, this is about in-stream flows for coho salmon and water supply security for people, but really thinking in holistic ways, how do we, um, in-stream flow is kind of a metric. And, and there's a lot of information here for folks to look at. And this is something that we've been working on a lot. Another fun project that I helped uh, co-conceive 20 years ago, and then we implemented it back oh, a decade ago, is a roof water harvesting system for a little town called Bodega. So the fire hall's got 60,000 gallons to protect for fire. All the residential uh, homes have roof water. We have agricultural water systems that are either 230,000 gallons, and then there's a uh, two of them at dairies that are 1.4 million gallons and 1.8 million gallon roof water systems, all of which are designed to get everybody out of the creek in the summertime from pumping from the stream to keep that water in the stream for the fish. And this got funded uh, the, to the tune of over $2 million by the federal government under President Obama and is, is a working and quite amazing. Um, 
And then I work a lot in watersheds in California in the realm of fire and our legacy of clear cutting of our forests and overstock forests. We have an issue here. We have, uh, we have too many trees, but not enough forest, if you will. So our mantra is fewer trees and more forest. And we're really thinning for the quality of trees and then using that beneficial biomass for um, improving a whole suite of, of um, needs here, which has to do with gullies that are eroding and head cuts that are migrating and channels that are incising and delivering sediment to kill salmon. How do we use the problem of that fuel load to be a solution for water and carbon and, and, and forest resiliency? And so I've been doing that for pushing 30 years and actually formally have permits from the Regional Water Board and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to legally place this hazardous material as they turn it into the creeks. Yay, beavers. I got one slide for you on beavers. Could do a whole long show on beavers, but I would just reference you to look at these documents. We have a downloadable PDF there. A group of us put this California Beaver Summit on this spring and or in the spring of 2021, a year ago. And that's got a ton of great talks. Read the book, Eager, a wonderful chapter called California Streaming on our work. And then just a couple slides here on some work I did a decade ago in, with an organization called the Muwande Trust in Mashiwa in Zimbabwe, dry Zimbabwe, and working with the wonderful man named Zephaniah Piri, who has passed on, uh, featured by Brad Lancaster in his amazing books about rainwater harvesting. And uh, I was working with farmers there who were having problems figuring out how to find contour on the landscape. And so I took three sticks and some bark and a rock from their project there and made an A-frame, a, a, a device that allows you to find level. And we worked with the community and taught them that. And eventually the women took this on. And here's an amazing um, quote from Dr. Ken Wilson that literally within 18 months of teaching these women how to make an A-frame, they went around the community with a song and a dance in three-part African harmony, which is incredible to listen to. And those folks at that point had laid out and excavated 120 miles of on-contour water harvesting ditches that allowed them to have water security to grow food instead of leaving the land. And so that project since 2014 has just continued on and it's really super exciting. A couple articles that people want to get into, but the, the upper one is more of a thought piece. And then there's actually a peer reviewed scientific publication that gets really nerdy with way too long a title about decentralized water management in Mediterranean climates. And ultimately that really gets us to this idea of restoring small water cycles. And what does it look like to, to basically receive and recharge and retain and release in a reverential retrofit from headwaters, from river to ridge, you know, ridge, river to reef. And so that's what I got for you. And then I just wanted to give a big hug out um, ultimately to everybody to just really honor that, you know, the health of our waters is the principal measure of how we live on the land. I love this quote by Leon Leopold. And to the degree we believe we live on planet water, then the health of planet water is really how we've been living on the land overall. And so with that, a uh, big shout out and a hug to my friend Mikhail there. Thank you, Christine. I know you're on for this photo from a few years ago when you visited. And that's what I got. And I'm going to stop sharing. Rock, thank you so much. Before we go to Mikal and to Ananda, I do just want to ask one more little question of you. And that is specific to the idea of your um, strategies and experience in mobilizing participation. And you've done so much cross-sectoral work, so much engagement across sort of public and private partnerships. I wonder what are some of the sort of um, maybe not so much challenges because I think that we a lot of people on this call understand there's a lot of compounding challenges, but what are some strategies or openings or methodologies that you've used or some success models you've seen for how to really create partnership and engagement and mobilize more of these sort of project efforts? Um, I would love to hear just a little bit of that before we move on from you today. Sure. Well, when folks download that Basins of Relations booklet, you'll see that it's there's a bunch of intro content that history but the basic part of that is really set up to support individuals and then also ultimate communities. And so we have a whole set of like problem solution statements for indoor, like where can people take agency personally indoors for water conservation or outdoors for water reuse, gray water, roof water, storm water, compost toilets, um, retrofitting landscapes, edibility. And then, it, and then there's a next section that really talks about community and building community at neighborhood scale or city scale and general plans and land use documents. And then it scales up to bigger policy documents. 
at, at the state federal level. And so I think there's, it's like a fractal, like the, I talk about ecosystem restoration and the community work needs to fractal just in the same way that a drainage network fractals in a watershed. And so there's different scales. The headwaters to me feel like individuals, the main stem of the river feels like the feds out to the estuary. And so I think there's different levels and where I mostly find ang leverage uh, an angle would be, um, it's kind of like the Archimedean thing, uh, give me a place to stand and a lever big enough and I can move the world. And the leverage that we need to move planet water, the World Water Day for us, to be honest with you, is, is um, around law. And so we have a federal Clean Water Act, we have state Clean Water Acts, we have Endangered Species Acts, we have uh, water rights. And so I intersect in, oh, you, the county, are required by law to clean water up. How about I show you a way where we can facilitate you being in compliance what you're need, with what you need to do while we build community to clean water that slows and spreads and sinks to bring the salmon back so it's the fish and game people who are required to recover the coho. And then I need fish and game to give me money for coho, and I need Cal Fire to give me money for fire, and I need the water board to give me money for sediment reduction. And I'm going to pair up all those funding sources to solve one thing because the bureaucratic fragmentation is too siloed to realize they all have a piece of the puzzle. So our job is specialized generalists is to be networkers and linkers. And so it's more like mycelium because you all are fun guys and fun gals. So mycelium honors your celium and our celium on World Water Day.